Welcome to QuickSuff Studio tutorial videos. In this video, I will show you how to use the calibration ruler in QuickSuff Studio to calibrate a direct digital x-ray. I have a sample file open and I have two images imported, one of a direct digital x-ray and one of an example of a known length piece of wire. On rare occasion you may have a, an x-ray image without a mid-sagittal ruler, without a millimeter length ruler. If that is the case, on that x-ray unit you want to hang a known length piece of wire on the mid-sagittal plane. In this case this is a hundred millimeter length piece of wire. The process is the same, is calibrating to this, you would just set this for 100 millimeters and calibrate to this instead. So let me show you the full process with a regular x-ray. Uh, first thing first, I need to place this x-ray in this FX ray spot, and I'm just going to bump it back so we see the ruler. I can also make it slightly larger. Okay, so now go to the tracing section, and we have our x-ray here ready to trace. Before we do so, we want to calibrate. And to do that, you click on the tracing tool. Sella and it's set uh, with sound, you know, it will call out sell it to trace, and then you can go on to others. But first we want to calibrate. So here's our calibration ruler. And we want to line up this calibration ruler to this mid-sagittal ruler. And I like to start by reading or counting out the mid-sagittal ruler first. It is five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So I'm going to do 45 millimeters from this big tick to this big tick. I'm not going to use the small ticks above it. I like just going by the big ones. So 45 millimeters length. So we start by double clicking anywhere in the you know blue area of our built-in calibration ruler, our QuickSuff Studio calibration ruler. And first off, this is set to film plane. That's incorrect. Film plane would be if this was an analog x-ray scanned on a flatbed scanner. In this case, we're working with a mid-sagittal. The general magnification is 1.1. That's going to be a 10% magnification. If you don't know your x-ray machine's magnification, you make it 1.1. But if you know your x-ray machine's magnification, you can make it that. Maybe your x-ray machine has an 8% magnification, 1.08. That would be an 8% magnification. Or maybe your x-ray unit has a 12% magnification, 1.12 would be the 12% uh, magnification. In most cases, x-ray units have around a 10% magnification. So we use that if you don't know your own x-ray magnification. You can call the x-ray company to find that out. Film plane resolution is what we're going to figure out. We don't know. We figure that out by lining up the rulers, but we know the length. And this is just the length of what you counted out. I counted out 45 millimeters. So I'm going to make that 45 millimeters and then close it. So you can see using the two white circles on either end is how you stretch and rotate this. And so I like to rotate them to be teeth to teeth. And then I stretch it to match. So something like that. OK, so that looks pretty good. You, I have all the you know, big marks lining right up. So to me, that looks calibrated. And we can do a quick test if we jump down to MX1 crown. My uh, <laughs> speakers are very loud. Let me mute that. Um, so on MX1 crown, if I trace this and I trace out the teeth, we draw the teeth based on your calibration, not based on the actual points that you put in. So the teeth look basically the size that you're expecting to. So that means that calibration is you know, dead on or at least very close to it. Say um, this was improperly calibrated, you know, these, I'll make them so they don't match. Now it's too small. Now look, we have itty bitty tiny teeth. Or if I make it, um, you know, too large, we have gigantic teeth. It's real quick and easy to tell when you don't have a proper calibration by your teeth size. The teeth size should always look close to correct, and then that means your calibration is correct. After you calibrate this, if this was your own x-ray machine, that means that each following x-ray you get should have roughly the same calibration. So we can double click on this calibration ruler to bring up the calibration settings. And you can see now your actual x-ray unit settings are mid-sagittal, 1.1, 246 DPI. 
Those three settings are the actual calibration. The length is only the length of the on-screen ruler. If I change this, it won't change the actual calibration. It'll just change that length of the on-screen ruler. So if I ever need to type it in, you know, maybe I have another file that I did in the past which was wrong. I can just open it up. As long as it was an x-ray from the same machine, I can make it mid-sagittal, 1.1, 246, and it'll have the same calibration as this one. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to save this as our default calibration. So I click on Save as default, and now this is set as the default calibration. What that means is if I do a new file, you know, if I make a new file, and um, I'll bring in an x-ray real quickly. I'll go to my um, desktop and sample patient files, and I have a sample photo here, um, calibration sample. It's the same x-ray. But so this is a brand new file I made, and I'm going to bring this in, and I'm going to go right to, if I was going to trace it, and go there, and look, already my calibration is 1.1246. See, it already is using the same calibration. So if I go to my MX1 crown, I have, you know, the right looking teeth size. So once you set that default calibration, any new session or new file on this machine is going to use that same calibration. Keep in mind, if you have multiple computers, each computer has its own saved calibration. Um, if you do open an old file, too, that has the incorrect calibration, you can go right to these settings and manually type them in, or you can hit Choose Default. And if you hit Choose Default and click the default calibration, it'll go ahead and set those same settings for you. Uh, that's the basics of using the calibration ruler with QuickSeff Studio. If you have any questions about it, please contact us. And do remember, if you did trace and the calibration's wrong, you don't need to retrace it. You can just fix the calibration, and that should do it. Um, of course, you always can retrace it if you want. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Take care.